everyone. My name is Mi Rang Baek. I'm lead pastor here at Kinto Park United Methodist Church. Uh, I'm recording this worship service uh, on Ash Wednesday, as you uh, see uh, Ash Cross uh, on my forehead. Loving friends, we welcome all of you worshiping today uh, on YouTube and Facebook to, uh, this morning. Join our online family, subscribe on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Instagram. Also, please visit our website, www.gintoparkumc.org, and please share this video with, with your loved ones on your social media. Loving friends, uh, share jo your joys or concerns, comment down below. We want to celebrate and pray with you. Also, please uh, give your tithes and offerings through our website, our website, uh, www.intoparkumc slash giving. You can easily uh, give your tithes and offerings and support our mission and ministries. Loving friends, today is the first Sunday in Lent. Lent is a season of 40 days, not counting Sundays. So today, uh, Lent season is a time of repentance, and time of fasting and reflection and preparation for Easter. So it is a time of self-examination. Loving friends, let us center and prepare ourselves for worship the first Sunday in Lent. Join me for the call to worship. We are gathered to worship our God. Send your spirit upon us. We come from many places with many burdens. Send you spirit upon us. We turn uh, our hearts to you, O God. Send your spirit upon us and make us your beloved family. Amen. <laughs>
Again, I invite you to share your joys or concerns comment down below. Let us pray. Loving and creating God, you are in covenant with your people. You have pledged to be our God and ask us to be your people, trusting in you in all our ways. But we find many excuses to prevent us from really trusting you. We erect barriers before our faith journey even begins. Our time, obligations, energy all become part of the bricks and mortar which fashion this barrier. We can give lip service to this journey. We can daydream about what it would be like to truly place our hands in yours and follow you. But when it comes to actually making the journey, our time constraints um, and weak commitments loom largely before us. Help us to tear down this barrier. Make us ready for the journey by replacing the fear in our hearts with a sense of joy and challenge of self-discovery and discipleship. Remind us that in service to you, helping others, we will also find ourselves made more fully whole. As we have spoken the names of our families, friends, and other, situ other situations in which healing and comfort are needed. Let us remember that we too stand in need of prayer and healing. Make us ready to receive your good news and then to be witnesses to your love to all your people. O oh God, hear our prayers spoken and unspoken. Fill us with your spirit when we continue to pray as Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our reading today is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1, verses 9 through 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness forty days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts, and the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God, and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent, and believe in the good news. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved congregation, here's a story. A three-year-old girl uh, came to her mother holding in one hand her great grandmother's vase saying mommy i'm stuck her other hand couldn't be seen it was stuck uh, inside the vase her mother tried to move quickly without uh, I mean, panicking because the vase was valuable to her holding the vase and her little girl she carried her girl to the kitchen sink. She used warm and soapy water to try to loosen the, toddler, uh, the toddler's hand, which was in, in, uh, indeed stuck. When soap didn't work, she reached for the butter while uh, greasing her child's um, um, wrist like a, a, like a cake pan. She asked the apparent mother's question, how in, how in the world did you do this? The girl explained uh, that she dropped candy down into, into the vase to see if, he, uh, if she could still see it 
uh, when it was at the, at the very bottom. She couldn't. When she reached in, her, uh, it, it reached in for her candy, she couldn't get her hand back out. So the more time went on, the more serious the, the whole situation became. The mother called the grandmother to come over and help, help, help assess the situation. A neighbor suggested Vaseline. So the apartment manager got, uh, got the WD-40. WD Still no luck. It seemed like the only way to get the child handout was to break the vase. Grandma arrived with her um, calming presence and went over to the little child, who was very upset and still very stuck. Sweetheart, she said gently, Mommy says you reached in the vase for candy, is that right? Mm-hmm, the child whimpered, still, uh, yeah, still breathless from crying. Honey, tell Grandma the truth now, do you still have a, do, do, honey, tell Grandma uh, to the truth now, do you still have a hold of that candy? Mm-hmm, she sobbed. The grandmother patted her back to comfort her. Let it go, let it go. The vase slipped off as smooth as silk. Loving friends, the Lenten season begins with Ash Wednesday. When we remember that Jesus took 40 days in the wilderness, for prayer and contemplation. It is traditionally a time when we take a serious look at our lives. We look long and hard at ourselves and discover some things we don't like. It is time for some self-remember and uh, I mean self-assessment, and it is time for some challenge. On Ash Wednesday, we remembered that we came from dust and that we will return to dust. We recognize that none of us is in the, in the, um, I mean, invincible. None is immortal. We all will die. It is a day when we realize that each moment is a gift and not to be wasted each day. We repent, especially during this Lenten season. What is repentance? Is it to say, I am sorry to someone? Is it to uh, state your regretful emotion or mind? What is repentance? We can find the answer from the first proclamation that Jesus, that uh, we just uh, read today. The Greek used for the word repent in the text is metanoia, which means to turn around from the, a wrong way or a, uh, to change into the right way to get the target. So therefore, repentance, metanoia, implies uh, a life change or a spiritual conversion toward a new life. I'd like to ask you, have you changed your life toward, la toward, uh, toward live a new life in Christ? Have you had spiritual conversion toward new life in Christ? Loving friends, simply speaking, to repent means to put Jesus first in your life. Jesus, according to uh, Mark today's proclamation, now is the time. Um, he, Jesus proclaims now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts, change your lives, and trust this good news. Loving friends, I really hope and pray all of us can hear God's voice from this phrase, now is the time, here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust this good news. We hear the tragedies every day from the news, but let's reflect on the last week just a week before. Last Sunday, we heard Lakewood Church, uh, where Joel Austin is ministering, had a shooting and two people injured. 
We also heard distressing news from the multiple locations across the United States, underlining the pervasive issue of gun violence. In one notable incident, a shooting at the uh, late night Sweet 16 birthday party in uh, Dade, uh, Dadeville, Alabama, resulted in four young lives lost and numerous others wounded, some critically. This event is a grim reminder of an um, unpredictable and indiscriminate nature of such violence, impacting communities and leaving deep scars. Another heartbreaking occurrence was in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where a shooting in the Strawberry Mansion neighborhood wounded seven individuals, and in, including two-year-old girl and five teenagers. This, the victims found themselves caught in gunfire that erupted near a school, adding to a growing concern over the safety of children and their, the, the impact of gun violence to young lives. These incidents, among others, highlight an ongoing crisis that sees no boundaries, spanning age, geography, and community. The availability of firearms and the case, I mean, the ease with which individuals can obtain them, often despite clear warning signs, warning signs, calls for a critical examination of current laws and regulations. The pattern of gun violence prompts a pressing question about the response from lawmakers and broader society of us. The idea that increasing the presence of firearms, even suggesting that the teachers be armed, emerges as a proposed solution by some. However, this perspective is met with skepticism and concern, as it suggests a normalization of violence within everyday spaces, fundamentally altering the fabric of communal trust and safety. Loving friends, I believe that we Christians must listen carefully and seriously to the voice of Jesus. Now is the time. Here comes God's kingdom. Change your hearts and lives and trust in God, trust in good news. When I think of, think of uh, continuous gun violence in this country, now, now is the time to change something to make this country a better place, a safer place for children and their families and all lives. It is time for all to repent before God. It is time to pray persistently for God's forgiveness, mercy, and patience to all in this country. It is because we believe in the power of the love of God. We believe in Jesus Christ, reconciled between God and us human beings. Therefore, we believe that we Christians are called and responsible for making peace, making reconciliation among human beings in conflict. As Methodists, we are called to live in the holiness of God. It is important to accomplish personal holiness day by day. However, we Methodists, must remember that John Wesley, the beginner of the Methodist movement, emphasized always on the importance of social holiness because, of, because God creates the whole universe and Jesus' sacrificial life is for all and the Holy Spirit comes to all beyond boundaries. Christian faith and life are not to stay in the room alone, but to live together as all living creatures in the public square, which is God, God's created world. Very sadly and unfortunately, nowadays so many people in this country are scared of going out to a public square because so many deaths and violence have been there. Violence. Violence has been getting like a part of human ordinary life. As we all know, violence is destructive. 
It can destroy human body, mind, and soul and spirit. Therefore, now is the time that we should say no, stop to all kinds of violence. It must be the fire. The first step, because so many people, especially politicians, reject doing so. However, we Christians must openly articulate this: gun violence is evil against God's created world. We need to change this situation as a place all people can safely resident without violence. Biblically. And theologically, we are called and responsible for living together with all living beings in this God's created world. As you see、uh, in our prayer concern, we all have been prayed for victims from all kinds of violence. Loving friends, in Genesis chapter nine, God makes the covenant with Noah and his sons and every living creatures in、uh, in the Noah's boat. Noah's Ark. It, it is a very beautiful story. God promises that there will never again be a flood to destroy the earth. God was a destroyer. However, when God makes the covenant with Noah and every living being with him, God is willing to put down the power of the destroyer. It means that God changes God's heart and mind for us. God humbles God's self. Before every living living being, also God places rainbow in the cloud as a symbol of the covenant. It is like that God installs a safety device by God's self. God promises that God will be patient consistently to all living creatures. Therefore, the rainbow is a visual reminder of God's humility, patience, and faithfulness. It reveals the will of God to make peace and reconciliation with all living creatures. So, the rainbow re- represents God's radical inclusivity. We must remember that God's covenant embraces not just humans but all living creatures, living beings. God wants to reveal God's face in all living creatures. From the understanding of the rainbow, we Christians can find the image of Jesus Christ for all living beings on the earth. Christ's face, namely God's face, can be hidden and found in humans and all living beings. God's rainbow is in each each other's face, and in every. Living beings face. Remember that you are a rainbow of God. Remember that you are a sign of peace and reconciliation. Remember that those sitting beside you are the rainbow of God. Remember those living beside your home are rainbow of God. When we all try to see one another as the rainbow of God, day by day, moment by moment. We may experience a life change by the Holy Spirit. By doing so, we can make our lives better. We can live together with all other living creatures harmoniously. We can change this world a better place for children. We can change this this country as a place where all people can safely resident. Brothers and sisters in Christ. I've very often spoken of love in my ministry here in this church. Love is the main theme in my sermons and ministries. What is love? It is not a complicated or difficult question. It is a very easy and simple question to answer. One day, I st- swinged by、uh, the children's Sunday school room and saw the craft that children made、uh, and abandoned for a long time. It looked like long ago, each one of them answered the question, "What is love?" I'd like to share、uh, with you some of their ideas and answers. Love is being nice. Love is hugs. Love is monster trucks. Love is loving people. Love is my mom. Love is loving your brother. Love is snacking friends. 
Love is hugs and kisses. Love is mama. Love is when you are kind and nice to people. Love is giving hugs and kisses. Love is saying I love you. I think the children know very well what love is and how they do. They may understand well the word of God. By their expression, God hugs, God kisses, not just me or humans, but all living beings. God is saying to you all, and all people in the world, and all living beings, I love you. Brothers and sisters in Christ, for the Lenten season, how do you continue to love God and others? Jesus asks us to change our hearts and minds today and trust in the good news. Don't grab yours and be stuck, but release and let it go and trust in God. So brothers and sisters in Christ, let us embody this word of Jesus Christ in our lives for this Lenten season. Love one another. Thanks be to God. Amen. Beloved congregation, receive the benediction. May the love of God the Creator, God the Redeemer, and God the Sustainer rest upon you and live through you this day and always. So now go in peace and love one another. Amen. <laughs>